Muito obrigado, professor Ernesto. E agradeço a todo Ernesto pelo convite e todos vocês por estar aqui. Eu gostaria de apresentar em português, mas como o meu português é, não é suficientemente bom, I should switch to English. So, uh, I would like to convey a message besides the, the specialized aspects of my seminar, which uh, maybe will not be uh, clear to everybody. I will try to give you an introduction to convince you about uh, two, two, two points. The first point, uh, the interest in uh, the fundamental study of uh, the spin lattice coupling in order to tailor uh, multiferroic properties of uh, novel materials. That means materials where magnetic ordering and ferroelectric ordering coexist. This is interesting as a fundamental aspect, but also for applications. So I will show you both uh, aspects. And the second point which I would like to uh, address is the interest and the potential of uh, the study of uh, new metastable uh, compounds. I will show you how these uh, materials can be stabilized using high pressure synthesis. And uh, I think it's important to realize that pressure is a very important thermodynamic uh, parameter, which associated with temperature widens uh, very broadly the range of uh, interesting materials, which uh, nature has not yet uh, synthesized. So uh, stable materials at ambient pressure are just uh, very few ones as compared to the enormous quantity of uh, uh, metastable phases which uh, have not yet been uh, synthesized. I would like to uh, um, focus on one particular family of these uh, metastable compounds which are called quadruple perovskites. And, uh, which are interesting for, uh, uh, as I said, for the fundamental aspect of studying the spin lattice coupling and as an applied issue for multiferroic design. And I will describe these materials in some detail uh, with uh, some intuitive uh, arguments to show you why they are interesting. So uh, this is a work has been done in, uh, within a FAPESP CNRS uh, project uh, at uh, my university, which is the University Pierre Marie Curie, which uh, is, belongs to the consortium of the Sorbonne University. So um, the, this is a collaboration which in, involves various people. Uh, my collaborators in Paris for various uh, characterization of the samples. The colleagues here at the UFISCAR, uh, the people at the superconductivity and magnetism group and also the people at the, um, uh, the ferroelectric group uh, of uh, Professor Ducinei and Professor Oliveira for the superconductivity and magnetism group. And uh, uh, my former colleague in Parma for the synthesis of the materials and uh, various neutron and crystallographic studies in, uh, at uh, Laboratoire Léon Bridouin in uh, France and the uh, Institut NEL. Uh, and they would like to acknowledge various discussions and help of various colleagues uh, here and uh, um, in other institutions. So the outline is, uh, first of all, the interest for designing uh, materials with novel electronic properties. And uh, I will focus on uh, those which are interesting uh, for uh, possible applications as uh, multiferroic memories, uh, which requires to tailor and to control the coupling between magnetism and the ferroelectricity. And the second issue is uh, how to understand a fundamental aspect which remains to be, which remains an open question is the spin lattice coupling when the coupling is not a perturbation. So the ground state involves both the spin and the, elec the electron and the phonon degrees of freedom or the lattice degrees of freedom in a non-perturbative form. And especially we are interested in the situation where magnet where ferroelectricity is induced by magnetism 
So that is called improper ferroelectricity. You probably are familiar with the ferroelectrics like PZT and the, and the titanate, where uh, ferroelectricity is uh, produced by a displacive uh, transition uh, independent of any other uh, ordering. In this case, ferroelectricity occurs in, as an, in, a secondary effect of uh, magnetism. This phenomenon is, uh, remains uh, a subject of active research and uh, is, uh, uh, is far from, from being uh, understood and controlled. And uh, in order to study these materials, which can be interesting, so we focused on metastable phases, and uh, I will outline some thermodynamic aspects and the technique to be used, which is high pressure synthesis. And, uh, and then I will outline what, what is unique in the, in, the, in the family of quadrupole perovskites, um, which, uh, we have been which we have been uh, working on. And uh, as a specific case, uh, we'll focus on this compound, which has uh, enhanced multiferroid properties and seems to be very promising for applications. And I will describe first the magnetic properties the evidence for a strong magnetoelastic coupling responsible for ferroelectricity, and we have evidence of a large polarization. And this order of magnitude, for people who are familiar with the ferroelectricity, is already a, a, a sufficiently large to envisage um, practical applications. And then I will outline conclusions and the perspectives. So, of course, uh, you are free, uh, you're welcome to interrupt me any time. Uh, maybe it's better to ask questions during uh, the, the seminar instead of just uh, at the end. So, please free, feel free to ask me any question. So, as a, as a starting point, uh, we, we may take a snapshot of the evolution of uh, uh, memories. Uh, I take this because it's a very popular applications which we have uh, everywhere now, almost everywhere. And um, uh, the, 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 the evolution is really so fast that we really have to keep up to date. And this is the, the, um, uh, the situation described, presented and the uh, International Solid State Secret Conference this year in February. So just uh, to take a, a, a one parameter, um, uh, figure of merit of uh, memories, uh, we are talking about non-volatile memories. Uh, ideally, a computer should not use uh, additional extra memories like flash memory of a hard disk. Ideally, a computer or any device could use for the fast memory used uh, when you are working with uh, programs, non-volatile memories, which are non-volatile, high speed and low power consumption. So in other terms, you will not be longer worried if uh, your Word or other program uh, stops because of a bug. You will not lose your memory. You will not use, use your work. So no panic. The velocity could be still very high or even higher. And your battery could last one week or maybe more instead of just one day. So uh, the flash memory are in this area of relatively slow uh, read, uh, reading velocity and of relatively low writing speed. That's why you, you realize that transferring uh, big files to flash memories like a pen drive requires some time. Now, in the, they are not yet commercialized, but some new memories are being commercialized which, which are, I would just focus on two because there are many, the ferroelectric RAM, and you see the evolution from 2006 to 2009 in terms of both reading and writing speed, which is amazing. And these are the resistive RAM, those with the called phase change memory. So in other words, you, you, you heat the, the memory bit and you cool down slowly and you have a crystalline um, area and then you have low resistivity or you uh, cool uh, rapidly and you have amorphous area and then you have high resistivity. So you have a two resistivity level 
uh, which uh, um, correspond to zero and one. But still, because of this process, the write speed is much one order of magnitude slower than the ferroelectric RAM. Why? Because in ferroelectric RAM, you, you have polarized domains, and you don't need to inject current. So you, the, 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 the speed is higher, and also the consumption is less. So <coughs> this suggests some uh, new concept, because uh, uh, on one side, the ferroelectric memories are, are, are faster, but on the other hand, the signal is low, the, the, the voltage measured. And the coupling between ferroelectricity and magnetism offers an opportunity for having a big signal without injecting current. So the idea is that you <coughs> polarize if a, a multiferroid material, which, ha which is at the same time ferroelectric and magnetic, in this case, antiferromagnetic. So you polarize with negative voltage and polarization is downwards or positively, and you have a polarization upwards. And because of the ma magnetoferroelectric uh, coupling, the, <coughs> the magnetization changes. So if you put a sandwich of magnetic material, uh, uh, the magnetic material uh, on top will also switch the polarity. And then you can use, but this is one, one possibility, this as a, 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 a magnetoresistance tunnel junction, where if the top layer is polarized parallel to the bottom layer, the resistance, this is resistance, is low. And if on the opposite, the, 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 top layer, the, the bottom layer is oppositely polarized as, as a respect to the top layer, you have a, a high resistance state. And a, this is the advantage of being fast. The signal is large, and you have low consumption. This is a, a concept proposed by a um, laboratory near Paris, uh, where also Albert Fert, the Nobel Prize who worked on magnetoresistance, has been working. And uh, this is just one idea. Of course, uh, the path towards commercialization is long. But that's got just to I give you this example to fix the ideas, which are the possibility of controlling magnetic domains by an electric field, and which are the perspectives in terms of uh, uh, applications. OK, this is just the, the vision. But now the challenge is very severe for multiferroic uh, materials. Because uh, you need uh, to have a strong magnetoelectric coupling. And the strong magnetoelectric coupling means that it is sufficient to have a small electric field or a small polarization to change the magnetic uh, magnetization, or vice versa. You need a small magnetic field in order to switch polarization. Usually, in a material, this occurs via a magnetoelastic effect or magnetostriction. That means you apply a magnetic field, and this produces a strain in the material, and the strain induces a polarization. Of course, we need to have a large polarization, a large coupling, and ideally also this should work at room temperature. So this is quite a, a, a big challenge. So that's why new materials are interesting, and that's why, in my opinion, it's very important to consider broadly uh, various families, various systems, and that's why metastable phases could be interesting because uh, uh, the, the, the range of possible materials is, uh, is very large. Any questions? So, uh, Now a little bit of mathematics. I hope uh, Professor Ernesto asked me to avoid the things which are special for, I mean, uh, typical area of, of physicists, but this is in kind of thermodynamics. Uh, you have a, uh, in, in, a, in a material, you have a, the free energy contribution arising from the polarization and electric field, the magnetization and the magnetic field. And if there is 
for symmetry reasons, a coupling between magnetism, magnetization and, and the polarization, the first term for a uniform magnetic structure is quadratic in both polarization and magnetization. In a case of uh, non-uniform, for example, spiral-like magnetic structure, it can be shown that uh, the contribution can be linear in P, so the coupling can be longer, larger, because then the P can couple with the gradient of the magnetization. This is a review paper by Mostovoy, which is very interesting from this aspect. 